Howdy! Welcome back to Book Talks. My name is Whitney and today I'm actually going to do adult books today, which is pretty far from what I normally do. I personally love reading like young adult books and teen books and rarely go into the adult realm unless they're super good. Um, but this time I've broadened my horizons and I found a couple of adult books that are amazing. And not only that, but they're also both British authors, so I thought I'd go across the pond a little bit and we can see, you know, what British authors and books are like. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Our first book is called Queenie's Teapot by Carolyn Steele. So this one is um, a trilogy. So this is the first book in the series and it follows, um, basically it's about Britain's um, political system. When democracy is no longer working, they decide to get rid of it. And a cohort of random British citizens are picked to help run the country. They literally just get called to duty basically and say, you guys are it, you're running our country, help us figure it out. And Queenie is the main character in this and she is called to help as well with some other characters like Doug and Deborah and Andy, probably missing a few, but they're all called, you know, to help run the country, the British, you know, like empire and stuff. And um, when I was first reading it, I was thinking about how scary that would be if it happened here. If I all of a sudden got a letter or a phone call saying, hey, like, we're getting rid of our whole democracy and our whole like way of government and you get to help decide what we get to do. Sounds terrifying. And they kind of go through that too. This whole story kind of follows these characters and kind of like the throws and the ups and downs of what that is actually like to be able to figure that out. And poor Queenie, when they're doing this, they're all trying to figure out what everyone's like specialty is, what their skill sets are, what they could be good at and helping with. And poor Queenie, like she doesn't feel like she's good at anything. So naturally she becomes head of state, you know, where else would you put her? And so it follows her journey of figuring out that as well. Um, I don't want to give too much away. I will say when I first read this, I didn't know much about um, the British government or anything like that. And this definitely gave me a big, a broader insight into that and then like what might be going wrong with it or what isn't, you know, kind of thing and what could be reimagined. And so this definitely gets you thinking about what if scenarios, which are always kind of my favorite. And I will say it's a little almost like dystopian, like a little bit like the world is changing. It's not so, it's not as dramatic as that, but it's a little bit like you have to think about, you know, those situations and it's actually really interesting. Um, they It's described as like a political satire and there are like those moments of like really humorous moments. I mean, it's British humor, but I find that funny. Um, and I think what I enjoyed most about this book is the character development. Like each character felt like a person. It didn't feel like a one-off like oh we need to add like one extra person let's just give them a generic personality not at all like all these characters felt like people and I either ended up liking them or I really didn't like them at all like Deborah like she wasn't my favorite character she kind of picked like annoyed me which tells me it was a good book though because then it made me her feel like a real character where I was like a little not my favorite kind of thing and then Queenie absolutely loved obviously so I could invest in her so yeah, again, I feel it's a trilogy. We do have this one at the Meridian Public Library. You can place a hold on it. Um, I We are getting the second one as well as the third one. Um, I'm not sure when those will be here, but I know we're ordering those. So they will be there for you to get and check out. I will say this is, um, a, there's a slight little bias for this one. Um, I actually have know and have met Carolyn Steele. She has unfortunately recently passed away. Um, but she is one of my best friends. It's her mother-in-law and um, It was super exciting. I got to read this before I ever met her So it was super fun to read it and fall in love with it and then get to meet the person and it definitely reflects her as a person and Kind of her writing style and stuff. So it's kind of a small dedication to her that she's passed now um, But her stories get to live on and it really is a good read um, So go ahead and check that one out Okay, so we did say I have one more, and again, British author, adult fiction, totally going out of my comfort zone with these ones, but uh, this one's called The Midnight Library. It is like a Good Morning America book club choice, and it's by um, Matt Haig, and um, this one was on our like lucky day shelf. If anyone's ever been into the library, we have like a little shelf uh, with like the hot titles, like the new books where like there's like a long line of holds for them and so you can never get them. These ones we don't allow holdable. These ones are just like, hey, if you happen to stop by and see them, you get to have them that day for like two weeks. And so that was like super excited to get this one because I was like, oh, yay. 
Um, and it's not really interesting, obviously, about a library, so that caught my eye. But this follows um, Nora Seed. She is a 35-year-old who is uh, depressed. She is uh, very depressed. She's made a lot of what she considers mistakes in her life, so she has a lot of regrets about things that have happened and where she's at in life. And um, so in the book, she does commit suicide. So there is suicide stuff in there. If you're not comfortable with that, this is probably not the book for you. Um, but she does commit suicide. But instead of dying, she actually ends up in what is called the Midnight Library. And in this library, essentially, she meets her old school librarian um, from back in the day who basically is going to help her try to find herself, find where she's supposed to fit in, what her life is supposed to be like. Um, in these books, she gets a book of regrets where she gets to see what she has regretted, um, all kind of like listed in a big old book, which sounds terrifying because I don't want to see that. But she gets, she does, she's confronted with that, and she gets the option to go through these books, which is basically living different parts of her life if something didn't happen, or if she decided to do take this trip, or she decided to like take this job or pursue this dream and she gets to live those lives to see what it would have been like had she done those things that she might have regretted or you know didn't regret kind of thing so it's really good um just to think about being able to live different lives that or a different version of your life by changing one little thing um yeah so that's what the book talks about it goes through Nora figuring out where she actually belongs and what life she wants to live and you know what, what, what regrets she wants to let go of and in this book, I will, a little bit of a spoiler, but not too much. She does realize she wants to live. She doesn't want to die. She didn't want to commit suicide. She figured out what I think a lot of people figure out when you're depressed and stuff, that it's sometimes it just gets so overwhelming that you feel like you want to so bad and you feel like that's the option. But through some of this, she does realize, you know, she wants to live. So I won't do any more spoilers than that because it's really good. And I want you guys to kind of read the ending and see where else she kind of gets through. Um, but definitely a good read. And the other thing about this, although it's heavy kind of topic, um, I'll say it's really easy to read. Like I kind of breeze through it and that's really hard for me because sometimes it's been really hard for me to sit down and read anything lately, let alone like a heavy topic like suicide. So it's a very good read. It's super easy. Um, this one's also you can check out, like I said, there's probably a long hold list, but check out, wait to see if you see copies in our lucky day as well. But you can get it um, through our catalog online, place at least get in line for it because it definitely is worth the read. So that's my two books that I had um, for this time, my two adult books, um, both really great books. I hope you go and check them out. If you guys do, you know, leave a comment either on Facebook or YouTube or wherever this video ends up. Um, and yeah, tell me if you like it or if you have like other British authors that you might know because I'm kind of getting into them. Like I am definitely enjoying them more than some of the other ones I've read lately. So thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you next time.